What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Coach's Corner. And in the studio, I have Michael Vincent from Hosel. And he'll probably correct it if I chopped it up, even though I've rehearsed it a few times. I'm terrible with people's names. Um, he started his career selling real estate. Um, I'm on the opposite side of that spectrum, as you all know. He also believed that there was more for him to do in terms of the community, his impact, and He's also the president of Toastmasters and is a personal development coach. So he is another person that I definitely want to have in the conversation because he kind of echoes some of the things that I do here on Fit Over 40. So I'm going to have Michael Vincent introduce himself. Well, thank you, Clarence. Fit Over 40 for all of you who are over 40 years old. Welcome. My name is Michael Vincent Renhoso, known as Michael Vincent Mindset on all my social media channels. But a little bit about myself. I grew up in San Diego, went to school here, didn't get the best grades in high school. It wasn't really the best time of my life. I went through a lot of antidepressants and psychological issues and wasn't, wasn't in a good place. And I didn't get the best grades. Didn't go to college, ended up going to a community college and then figured at that point, you know what, I was about a semester in and I was like, this isn't really working out. It's just more of the same of high school. And I was like, well, what's the best thing for me? And my father had a real estate brokerage here in San Diego. And I figured that was the best path for me to be successful in life. And I ended up getting my real estate license and worked with him. Mm -hmm. How'd you then? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. And then at that point, I started selling real estate with him, you know, direct mentorship from someone who was successful in the business. And I really didn't, I don't know. I, I saw the, I saw the path before I even walked it, Clarence. And to mm -hmm. me, that wasn't a very fun life, a very adventurous life. And after a couple of years, I just thought to myself, like, is this really what I want to do? Or is this what my parents want for me? And then I went to a real estate meeting about seven years into selling real estate, my fiance just suggested to me, why don't you go pitch your listings at a real estate caravan? So I go to this real estate caravan and I'm shy, I'm uncomfortable. And let me tell you, my freshman year of high school, I went up in front of the room to go and speak and present my poster. And I was so nervous, Clarence. I get up there and I'm like, I can't even get a word out. I'm so <laughs> nervous. And all I thought to do was just go and sit down. So I went and sat down, didn't even say a word. They moved on to the next person and everything was okay. So I went up to my teacher after that class and I told her, do not ever call on me to do any public speaking, any presentations, anything. Like, I do not like this. So fast forward to those seven years in real estate. I didn't do any public speaking, any presentations up until about 10 years outside of high school. I get to this real estate meeting. I'm shy. I'm uncomfortable. I'm like, you know what? I don't know how I'm going to be perceived. I don't know what people are going to think about me when I get up there. This is, all these thoughts were coming to me that I didn't think of before. And I'm sitting there and people are getting up and they're presenting. And I'm sitting there and the host gets up and says, all right, does anyone else have any other properties that they'd like to share? Please raise your hand. And I'm sitting there, Clarence, and I'm freaking out. I'm like, oh my God, I'm supposed to get up right now and pitch these properties, right? My fiance told me to go pitch the properties. I wanna make her proud. I wanna be able to do, I wanna do what I said I was gonna do. And I was there, I'm like, you know what? Now's my time to raise my hand. And I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it, Clarence. It was too hard, it was too heavy in that moment. The emotions were too, too much. The thoughts were just killing me. And I just couldn't put myself in that fire. Mm -hmm. And I left that meeting just devastated. Like, really? Like, I got to go home and tell my fiance that I couldn't go and pitch these properties? Like, in front of 10, 15 people? Like, what kind of man am I? You know, I had such a deep moment of reflection with myself about my behavior. And I just had to say, I cannot accept this. So I went home, told her, started looking up, how can I overcome the fear of public speaking? Ended up going to my first Toastmasters meeting. And a few days later... I'm walking around the parking lot at 6.58 in the morning on a Friday morning. And I'm like, all right, where's the room? I need to find the room because they're going to get started soon. 
and I'm trying to find the room. There's no signs, no labels, nothing on the doors or anything. And I'm like, gosh, where's this room? Meanwhile, inside the room, the president of the meeting gets up and says, all right, ladies and gentlemen, at 7 a.m. we're going to go ahead and kick off the meeting. We're going to start with any guests this morning. <laughs> That's the one to come up and introduce themselves. Now, at that moment, Clarence, I found the room and I'm walking through the door and he goes, oh, looks like we have a young man that just walked in. Huh. You know, man, why don't you come on up here and introduce yourself and conquer that fear of public speaking? Oh, man. Puts the microphone right in my face. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Puts me right on the spot. Sure. Uh, okay. Get up in front of the room. Hi, I'm Michael. <laughs> to a real estate meeting and plan to speak, but I couldn't. So I'm here to improve my public speaking skills. And I gave him the microphone and quickly just went and sat down. Oh, you didn't even do the properties? No, no, this is at the Toastmasters meeting. Oh, Toastmasters. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Well, I gotcha. did it. I didn't pitch the properties at the real estate meeting, left there all upset. But then I went to Toastmasters a few days later. So I go and I say a few words. I go and sit down. And at that point, I was so relieved, Clarence. Like, good, goodness. I can finally sit down and just watch the rest of the meeting. I went home, told my fiance. I'm like, babe, I did it. I did it. And she's like, you did what? And I'm like, I introduced myself. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, oh, great. And I'm like, yeah. You know, I was I was put on the spot right when I walked in. Only spoke for about five, ten seconds. But that put me on the path to where I am today. Mm -hmm. Six months later, started giving speeches. A year later, ended up becoming the president of Toastmasters of that club and becoming a personal development coach, helping people overcome their limiting beliefs gotcha that's beautiful um i remember my first time going in uh toastmaster and giving speeches before and got in front of room so i wasn't nervous i'm such a perfectionist though what was really killing me was how i sounded so i was having this internal dialogue you know and i sat down next to mine i said how was it and i was you know expecting him to be like you you sounded terrible you didn't know what you were doing but re in reality it was just structuring how like if you're going to give a speech for me because I have these thoughts I'll start on this subject and then I veer off over here and then you know so you know that was the thing the feedback I got did you know how many times you said um did you did you know that you were off track and you need a formula so I'm like okay I got to work on that and I used to stutter a little bit a little bit of a list so I was this is all going on in my head and I was just introducing myself like what I was doing you know at the time and I was putting all this pressure on myself and all they heard was, I'm, my name's Clarence. I'm a personal trainer. I've been doing it for X amount of years, whatever. And in my head, I'm like, God, you're stumbling, you're stuttering, you sound crazy. It's funny, the dialogue that we create in our heads that messes things up, you know? Yeah. So how did you become the president of Toastmasters? I mean, you went from barely saying your name to now you're the president. Yeah. <laughs> That's quite a journey. Well, what happened was, so I went to that first Toastmasters meeting, barely introduced myself. But you know what? That, to me, that was progress. I went home, told my fiance, and I was so proud of myself because that was that was a step in the right direction. Sure. So I was like, okay, now I just need to keep taking these steps. So I kept coming week after week, kept pushing myself to just improve just a little bit more every time that I came. And after six months, I started giving speeches. And then I started, people would say to me, wow, like you've grown so much. You I remember when the first time you came here, you could barely introduce yourself. And I thought to myself, like, really? It doesn't feel like that because every time I came, I just got that much better. Yeah. I was like, okay, I, I want to take it further. So I started looking up different clubs, started going to different meetings all throughout San Diego. And Clarence, when I went to those different clubs, it was like the first meeting again because it's in a room now with people I don't know, I'm not comfortable with, and I have to break through again and give a five to seven minute speech. And I would, and I would just push myself, push myself, push myself. And I was doing three, five, seven, nine meetings a week, all of 2023 speaking and giving speeches because I wanted to get that much better. And I knew the repetition of it, of taking those actions was putting me in that right direction. And then I put on my own personal development seminar, spoke for 45 minutes. And then my second personal development seminar, six months after that spoke for two hours. But at that point, Clarence, to answer your question, I was already so involved in developing myself as a public speaker 
that the president role found me. There was a point where the president of our club was taking more time off to travel for work. And that's, that's what it was doing. His work was taking him more in that direction and someone needed to step up and there was no question who it was. That's awesome. Um, let's talk about your personal development. What type of, what's your ideal avatar client that you feel like you connect the best with? <laughs> the person I connect the best with, that's going to be who I once was, right? That's the best person I can relate to. And this was just four months ago. Four months ago, Clarence, I was not exercising. I was eating one meal, two meals a day. I was not developing myself. I was very involved in drinking, doing drugs, pornography, junk food, all kinds of things, all these vices that are putting us in the wrong direction, right? Michael, so, is, Vincent is describing a period of my life. I don't know how he knows it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's very common, right? Yeah. <laughs> not very, very much spoken about, but it's right. a lot of these things are very common, you know, like what you were saying about the speaking, like, Oh, I was expecting them to say it was terrible, but they said it was great. Well, you mm -hmm. know what, Clarence, all that matters is what you think of you. Sure. And that's what I realized early on in Toastmasters was like, everyone that's going up on stage is showing us how comfortable they are with themselves and what their own thoughts, it's you know, way of looking at it, but to, to bring you back to where I once was four months ago. So I was doing all that stuff, not in the right direction. And I'm out in Miami with my fiance for her birthday. We're having a great time. And I was feeling so uncomfortable, just feeling cold, feeling shakes, feeling nervous, not feeling right. And I, I got to a point where I was like, my physical health was not good. Like I wasn't eating enough food. I wasn't exercising. Like I was very thin. I was weighing 149 pounds. Wow. Like six feet tall, 149 pounds. Yeah. You know, not building any muscle or anything. There's photos of it on my Instagram. I posted it. So the point is, is that four months ago I was lost. And then one day I was walking around at the mall with my fiance when we got back from Miami. And I was like, Hey babe, like, I don't feel good. Like I'm, I'm really like exhausted. Like I'm getting tired. She's like, Oh, okay. Like, you know, let's go home. You know? So we go home. I get home. I lay down on the couch. She's like, oh, I'm going to go get a spray tan, spray tan and get some groceries. And I'm like, okay. And I don't even remember telling her, but I'm laying down on the couch. She's gone for like two hours. She comes back and she turns the light on because the lights are all off and it's like seven o'clock at night now. And she sees me laying on the couch. And right when she gets home and turns on the light, I'm my whole body is tensing up and I'm having a seizure. Wow. My, my whole body is just pulsing. And she called the ambulance. She gave me CPR. She was freaking out. And the ambulance came, got me, you know, took me to the emergency room. I ended up waking up in the ICU three days later. Wow. And I'm waking up and I'm like, I'm in a lab. Like, well, this isn't reality, you know? And, and the nurses are like, oh, hey, Michael, like, you're in the ICU. And I'm like, what? And they're like, yeah, you know, you, you had a seizure a few days ago and, and, you know, you've been recovering here. And I was just so tripped out. Like, are you kidding me? My fiance is there, my family's there. And I'm just like, what is going on? And in those few days of me being there, I was in the ICU for those three days. And then two days after that, and then I ended up getting released out of the hospital. And oh my gosh, Clarence, I was at the lowest, lowest point of my life. But that put me on the path to taking my health seriously, starting to look into nutrition, what macros were, start to count my macros, start to work out, look up how, how I can build muscle. And I started doing that in, in the last four months. I've gained 16 pounds. I'm eating incredibly well now, four or five, six meals a day, fully healthy. Yeah, you Take look great. You can see it. You can see your energy. You yeah. know, you know, when you talk to people who are sick or, you know, in a, in a different space, you can see it, you know, yeah. have that. And I hate to use that cliche, the glow, but it's kind of what it is. You, your energy is inside and out. So I can see that on, you know, I get yeah. people who come on here and I'm like, whoa, energy lacking, <laughs> but you right on with it. So yeah. I love that. that's well, a that's, story, that's the man. Biggest thing. That's the biggest thing, man. It's, it's like, what's go, what's going on inside is reflected on the outside. 
And you 100%. Can see people can see it. And that's the, the way that I got here to where I am today is the program that I teach people on now. Gotcha. It's, Let me ask you be- this as a man. Um, I, I tend to tend have I've had a lot of females on my show. Um, and we talk about how men don't talk about depression and things we deal with because we're supposed to be tough and we never have feelings. How how would you address somebody, you know, getting in touch with those things? Because I think it's important, you know, because if you don't, what you don't deal with inside, as you know, and you said earlier, is going to come out. It's eventually going to pop out. How would you tell a man listening, hey, you need to be you need to be OK with those feelings and dealing with them, learn how to deal with them correctly? Well, first thing you need to do is spend some time with yourself. You know, you got to get clear on what that is for you. And self-mastery depends on self-honesty. We need, to, we need to be able to look ourselves in the mirror and say, you know what, I'm overweight or I'm underweight or I'm not in the body weight or body shape that I want to be in. Or I'm, I'm not doing it financially, whatever it may be. You have to look yourself in, in the mirror and say, you know what, I'm not getting these results. I want to get these results. Okay, so what, what needs to change? And one of the most important things to being comfortable with that is just looking at things for what they are. We're all the same. We are all the same. We may not be equal in terms of our market value, but as a spirit, as a soul, we are all the same. We're the exact same thing. And when you can recognize that, then you can be more at peace with yourself and where other people are. Because a lot of a lot of the issues are comparison to other people. If you're not yes. willing to express how you're feeling, it's because maybe you feel that expressing how you feel is going to make you be lesser in someone else's eye. But it goes back to what I was saying. All that matters is what you think of you at the end of the day. Yeah, I love that. Um, I think that you made an interesting point because you said being comfortable with yourself. A lot of the distractions you described earlier, the drugs, the alcohol, the bad relationships, pornography, those are distractions when people are running from themselves. So, you know, you get drunk to feel a certain way because you really don't want to deal with the emotions in your head or you watch pornography or whatever. It takes you away from your reality. And there was a point in my life when I had that wake up call, if you will, looking in the mirror one day, mine was actually walking somewhere. And you got to remember, I've been a personal trainer for 35 years and I kind of, you know, took fitness for granted because I was always generally in shape and I got a little older and more comfortable, more party and more success. Uh, I was walking by, I was going to a business meeting. So I was dressed differently. Normally I have a hoodie on or something athletic, which a lot of times can hide how you really look. And I I had on some slacks and a dress shirt and I caught myself on the side in the mirror and I saw, I said, man, I put on some weight. Like what the heck's going on? So I get that. I know what that's like. And I, there was a wake up call, but I was, you know, partying and just doing stuff that I know I shouldn't have been doing, you know, but I always was like, Oh, I'm a nutrition guy. I know how to fix this. So I would kind of push the envelope and, you know, test what I know is (laughs) the reality. And so I get that. Um, So what do you think in terms of people right now? We're in kind of an interesting time. Anytime there's an election season, people are dealing with all kinds of stuff. What advice would you give somebody going through this period right now? We're getting, we're getting, we're getting pulled in different directions and media is crazy. What do you think? My, my, it's crazy, Clarence, because you know what, when the elections last time were going on, so what is it? It's 2024. So in 2020, when the elections were going on, I was crazy into the conspiracy theories and all these different channels and podcasts that would pull your attention in so many different directions of like, oh, this could be happening or this could be happening. And it's like, there's so many potentials of what could happen. Mm -hmm. A lot of these things, Clarence, are out of our control. Absolutely. If we're going to be sitting there thinking about all these potentials that are out of our control, it's going to drive us insane. Yes, I realized after that election, after all the conspiracy theories and all the podcasts I was listening to, I was like, I I can't do this again. Like, I can't do this anymore. It's just too much, you know, and it's taking away from my life, my own sanity, my own, you know, emotional peace. Mm -hmm. And I realized that, you know, what, there's going to be all kinds of things going on in the world at all times. And we. The most important thing for us is to always be working on ourselves. Because yeah. that's the only thing we really can work on. At Absolutely. The end of the that's and correct. So with, with all this stuff going on, I just say double down on working on you. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> you speak to a lot of 
corporations and businesses. So obviously they're bringing you in to help them around, maybe help with sales. What's the message that you're giving there? You know, obviously working on yourself in a sales contact, if you might be, you know, knowing your numbers, how many calls you're making, how many people you're reaching out to, how are you expanding your network? What's the message when you're in front of a room full of, in many cases, successful people may not be at their peak, but they're successful on some level. So my message is, it's still the same. You keep it the same, huh? It's because the what I teach and what I coach people on is it's true to their core. So what I teach is personal development. And that's okay. going to take you to heights that business can't. It's, it's your own level of awareness, your own level of understanding. And wherever you go, whatever business you're in, it's going to be your level of personal development that determines your success. How capable are you to enact the plan? It's not necessarily the plan itself, but how well are you at, at instilling it in your daily habits? Because all we are are our habits. So what I teach in my program is essentially five pillars to success. And it's the daily process. It's the wake up time. Yeah. It's the reading and reflection. Mm -hmm. It's the workout. It's counting your macros and dropping your vices. If you do those five things. What was the last one again? I'm, I missed the last one. Dropping your vices. Oh, vices. Okay. So if you do if you do those five things that I teach in my program and I have a private app that has you held accountable to these five things, if you can do those five things every single day, you're going to be elevated. You're going to live at a higher frequency. You're going to yes. be in a, a different state that usually holds people back or gets them in those fear or limitation thoughts for them to actually act and do the things that they have to do to get the results that they want to get. You have to be willing to show up when you don't feel like it. And that's what this program does. Mm -hmm. So how does your process work? When someone reaches out to you, do you start with a consultation? Do they fill out a questionnaire? How do you dig in and get what you need to help them? So a lot of my, a lot of my closings of leads is done through my DMs on Instagram specifically. So Michael Vincent Mindset, on Instagram, DM me if you're interested in coaching. I'll send you the two programs that I offer. One is my mid-level program, which is mindset, fitness, and nutrition. Mm -hmm. And it instills the five steps that I just shared with you. It allows you to count your macros. I give you macros for you to be on. It's not going to be tailored to what your daily schedule is now. It's going to be able to, it's going to get you to cut all the body fat, get you lean, build the muscle, and then gain from there. And that's the process that I just went through. I cut, I got lean, and then I built on top of that. So we can tailor your macros to shape your body in different ways. And a lot of people aren't even counting their macros. It's crazy to me because, yeah, I mean, just four months ago, I wasn't either. But now once I've learned, I'm like, oh my gosh, everyone has to be doing this because it keeps us on point. It it's an eye opener for sure. When you realize how much you're eating or not eating, you know, where you're getting your calories from. Yeah. It also holds us accountable to eating specific fats, proteins, and carbs every day for us to hit the goals that we want to hit. Yeah. So that's what I do is if you DM me coaching, I'll send you the programs that I offer. You tell me what program or plan you want and we start. So as we approach the pretty much the end of this year, we're in that fourth quarter. What are your personal and professional goals? I would say personal goals for us, for myself to inst further instill my own discipline and also develop my Instagram channel. Okay. Instagram is a huge platform. It's something that I really want to take advantage of and continue to post on. It's something that I really enjoy posting on. I, I post on my story daily yeah. and I post all kinds of things on my story, just everything that's going on in my life. And, you know, it's such a wonderful, wonderful time that we have to be able to share with people that. Yeah, so that would be one of my personal goals, professional goals, get on more podcasts, get out there and get more clients, you know, obviously build my team and mm -hmm. you know, just develop that more. Love it. Love it. Um, so you said fiance, when's the big wedding? Yeah. So we've been engaged two years. Uh Oh, come on, Michael. Come on, Michael. Got to yeah. do it, bro. <laughs> we're, we're both 29 and oh, you guys are young. Man. <laughs> we're actually moving out to Miami uh, next week. And then I'm going to be splitting time between there and San Diego. I have some business here to, to take care of. 
Hey, Are you man. nervous about the hurricanes? You know you're moving to the beat, the belly of the beast, man. Hey, uh, I'm we're using we're this on there with everyone. We're we're all together in that. <laughs> Yeah, I love Miami. Used to hang out there in the early 2000s quite a bit. Uh, Miami's great. San Diego's nice. I'm originally from Los Angeles, so I'm familiar with those coast cities. So, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, are you thinking about writing a book? Because you got kind of an interesting life of success, yeah. some low points, and then rebuilding. You think that's something you're going to do in the future? I definitely. Definitely something. It's something that I enjoy doing is is writing. I write to myself every day. Just you journal. That's good. Yeah, yeah. So that's part of my morning routine. Is I'll do some reading and reflection. You know, I write down, you know, what behavior, what acts did I do the day before that I was not proud of, or you know, my conscience was telling me that I regret, and I'll weed those out of my life. That's that's literally the process that I teach and the program that I teach is getting you in touch with your conscience, that voice within you, the authentic voice of God. It's, it's aligning you with your higher self for you to become aware of, hey, what do I need to cut out of my life? Or what do I need to change? What do I need to do? What do I need to do in this moment? It allows you, it, it allows you to tap into infinite intelligence. Now, is there someone you won't talk to or say, I don't think I'm the guy for you? No. Or do you try to take on everybody? You no, know it's funny, Clarence, as someone just commented on, one of my TikToks this morning and they're all upset with what I said in the video. What I said in the video was what if everything that's taking place is actually necessary for you to get to where you want to go. And that if you just went through that adversity, that pain, that op those obstacles, the challenges that it's inevitable for you to hit what you want to hit or the goal that you want to hit. And someone commented, well, my part, my partner dying, is that necessary for me to go through and, you know, they're all upset, like, shut the F up. And, you know, they, they commented that and were upset. And I just sat there and I thought about it. And I was like, well, you know, we can't control the circumstances. There's things that are out of our control in, in life. But, you know, what we can control is our attitude towards it. That's all I said to them. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, I've, and the reason why that came to mind was because you asked, is there anyone I wouldn't work with? And the truth is, is no, because when I can get beyond myself and not resonate with where that person's coming from or, or like get on their level and, and snap back at them. If I, if I cannot, if I don't do that, I feel that I'm, I'm now transcended myself to where now I can just help people. And I don't care if someone hates on me. I don't care if they say mean things to me, just we're all here to get better and improve. And you know what? People are only giving what they got. And that's the truth, you know? Well, you're, if you're building your social media, you got to expect some hate. There's going to be people, again, but that's more about where he's at. Obviously, you didn't know writing that or saying that, that his, he just lost a partner. And even in that, there is a lesson, but it, it takes a while to get to that level of understanding because we have people we know who die around us. And um, I had a client, you know, and this is a sad story, but she was drinking and she killed everybody in the car except for herself. And this guilt was how come it wasn't me? And she dealt with that for a long time. And again, she had to, that's, and that's, it sounds horrible to say it, but that's what needed to happen for her to realize her life was out of control. Not the sacrifice of those other people. That's just, you know, unfortunate, but for her to go, I'm out of control. I got to get it together. And, and that's what happened for her. And she was kind of saying the same thing. Like, well, what messages is it for me? I'm, you know, <laughs> And, you know, she's done a lot of therapy and got worked through that. So, you know. So do you consider yourself a therapist or more of a coach? Huh. I think it's a little bit of both. <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> You're going to do a lot of underpaid therapy work in your life. Trust me. <laughs> you know, honestly, the, the truth for me is like, I don't mind it because I've been there. And, you know, it's funny because I've been there in, in those dark places and I've talked myself out of it. So I've been there for myself. And you know what I've realized, like, just from the story that you just mentioned right now, like, to me, that shows that woman's strength. For her to say, why was it not me? That means that she was willing to sacrifice herself for the others in the car. For Absolutely. Them to a better life. And that, to me, shows how powerful we truly are. And she may not have even recognized how yeah. powerful she is for even being willing to say, I'll be willing to sacrifice for 
Yeah, I agree. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, Michael Vincent, tell everybody again how to find you on all the socials and make sure you guys follow him on Instagram. Go ahead and tell everybody all your socials so they can follow you. Well, everything Michael Vincent Mindset, michaelvincentmindset.com. You can go on there, see what you're going to get in the program, see my story, see more about me on there. But mainly Michael Vincent Mindset on Instagram. I do long form videos on YouTube, but Michael Vincent Mindset on Instagram, TikTok, everywhere else. Gotcha. All right, everybody. Thank you again for tuning in. We always try to find people who are going to bring some value. And if you find value in Michael Vincent and his coaching, please follow him. Please, you know, see if he wants to have a chat with you. Nothing can hurt. Just a conversation. He might resonate with you. And people always ask me this question. I got this question last week, so I'm addressing it publicly. Why do you have coaches on when you coach? And I said, because everybody is going to resonate with, with somebody differently. Just like when I was a personal trainer, I didn't train every client. It's impossible to train every person. So somebody might hear Michael Vincent's message and say, hey, that's what I needed to hear that day, whether I'm saying the same thing or not. So that's why we like to bring other perspectives on. And I learn from people as well. And so that's why we like to have different coaches on and Coach's Corner. And that's why I started this segment of the podcast. So thank you, Michael Vincent, for your knowledge and sharing with us today. And uh Everybody tune in next week. We'll have another amazing guest. We'll see you next time.